how do you force yourself to write so frequently? Now, that's an interesting question that I was recently asked. So I thought, here, this last episode of the 2019 fiscal year, for those of you who are U.S.-based business geeks like myself, (laughs) I thought I would address that. Episode 107 of Horrible Writing. That will will never never work. work. You can't you can't push push seriously? No, 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 The rawest, most candid, in-your-face writing show on the interwebs because none of us have time to suck. Let's do this. Welcome everybody, Paul Sading, your host of Horrible Writing. I hope this finds you well as we say goodbye to summer and hello to the autumn, the best time of the year. In the Northern Hemisphere, I'm sure, because Southern Hemisphere, you're going into spring, and I'm not a big spring fan, I'm not going to lie, better than summer, but not as cool as winter. Not by a long stretch. I want to thank everybody, every single one of you who has gone and picked up RIP. I'm very pleased with how that's doing so far, and it's been an interesting journey, because it's the second book in a series. The first time I've ever done that, started an actual series by having at least two books. And, you know, doing the fiction uh, audiobook version of it, all of that. And it's been very interesting as I continue this journey of learning the self-indie, you know, the indie publishing life. There's so much to learn, isn't there? And to those of you who have come in over and you've joined us over at the Horrible Writing Writer Support Group on Facebook. If you're not there yet, why not? You don't use Facebook? No big deal. Get your account dusted off a little bit. Join that group and do nothing else on Facebook. Stay happy. Sorry, Facebook, if you've got someone listening. But I know what Facebook can be like sometimes. We're not like that. Come join us. Tony DeLape of the Cardinal Sin Saga podcast, an audio drama, definitely go out there and check it out. Once asked me that question that I started the intro with, how do you force yourself to write so frequently? Tony went on to say, I have such a hard time keeping it anything more than a little while, and even with that, I end up distracting myself. And I don't think Tony's alone at all. I know myself, as a, especially as a younger writer, I was easily distracted. I would have loved to have maintained focus on a certain project. So I can, I definitely get where he's coming from. My response to this is a couple parter. One part is just simply a mechanical thing. The other part is a life cycle thing. So I'll tackle the easier one first, I believe. The life cycle. I have the pleasure of knowing Tony through podcasting circles. So I have an idea chronologically of where he's at in life. When I was in his place, I very much thought the same way and acted the same way. I wrote a lot of short stories because short stories were appealing to my attention span in and out, in and out, in and out, over and over and over. And I tried a number of novels, and I would get into, you know, I don't know, 25, 30,000 words. And then I would flatline each and every time. It wasn't until my mid-30s when I actually could sustain through the whole thing. Now, I am a person of structure. Having joined the military when I was 17, it's just one of those things that's a... Yeah, A survival tactic, if nothing else, in the military, you have to. Even if you don't like it, you just learn to exist with it. 
So I'd already had a lot of structure in my life, and it still took me that long. But I do believe that there is a life cycle aspect to this. And I share that because I don't want anybody to be discouraged. I don't want anyone to think they can't do this because they can't focus. It may not even be something you can really impact slash control at this point. Now, I am far from giving people excuses. You all who have listened for a long time, you know that. You know that about me and empowerment through candor. I just want to be real. But I do think that it's unfair to say that that has nothing to do with someone's ability to focus on a single project and see it out. So, not that you wait it out. I still think you, and I'm talking to some notional you, not Tony specifically or anybody specifically, unless you think and feel that I'm talking to you, then yes, I'm talking to you. You still have a responsibility. If you know that you get distracted, then you are the person that has to set up some structural aspects to see things through. You have to have dedicated writing time. You have to make it the same time every day. Now, if you have a job where your schedule's all over the place, then you don't ascribe a time to it. You ascribe a period to it. If you work at 8 a.m. one day and 2 p.m. the next day, the hour before 8 a.m. is your writing time. The hour before 2 p.m. is your writing time. That's how you do daily writing. Everybody can do that. Everybody can do that. I'm waiting for the people to fill in all their excuses why they can't, and then I'll continue because you can do it. It's about that mindset. You have to want this bad enough, putting the important things first. So that's part of it. You've got to set that up. You've got to commit to it, right? That the tease of the new will always be there. I just published my fourth novel. I will be publishing my fifth in a little, a few weeks later this fall. It's going to happen that people get distracted, but you've got to commit. You've got to recognize that about yourself. If I get distracted and I go do a new thing, I'm not denying the tease of the new. And I'm here to tell you, the tease of the new hits all of us. I can only speak foundationally from my own experience. But again, having published what will be my fifth novel this fall and hundreds and hundreds of stories before this, it still doesn't go away. Uh, if you rewind a few months to any of these episodes, you'll hear me talking about my epic fantasy, Crown of Thieves, coming out in 2020, hopefully, right? Well, that's not going to happen. It's not because the tease of the new. It's a business decision I made because Crown of Thieves would be a lot harder to get out there that quickly compared to the contemporary fantasy I'm working on. But that contemporary fantasy was an idea, a seed that I planted a long time ago. And I just left it there. And it would tease me from time to time, call me, Hey, Paul, come play in this world. It'll be a lot of fun. But I denied it because I had to focus. Now, how you go about focusing, how you go about committing is up to you. First, get this structure set. Write every single day. Same time, same place. Stop coming up with excuses to do it. Just do it. If you are serious about this, if this writing thing is more than just a passion play for you, then you've got to get serious about how you go about it. Writing is a business. Treat it as such. Business people don't just wing it, and those who do fail. So set that structure up and then commit. Build on that commitment. If you feel yourself tanking out in the middle of a novel, it may be 
because you're still learning to change that behavior. And behavior modification takes a long, long time. You need to know that going into this so that you can set up that structure to help you. If you've always just bailed on projects because the T's of a new project is there and you've done that for five years, well, it's going to take you then 10 years to completely unlearn that behavior. The earlier you set up those mechanics in place, the better, the quicker, the more assured I am that you'll succeed. But you have to do these things. You have to figure out how you deny it. Start small. Start with short stories. Move up to novellas. Move up to novels in that in that increment. But commit to a project one at a time. Start with the shorter lengths working up to those longer lengths. And I've shared this tip before, and I think it is helpful for the T's. You've got your daily writing time. You notice how I keep going back to this? It's that essential. It's that critical to your success. But you've got your daily writing time. You know you're going to write for, fill in the blank, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, four hours, whatever it is every single day. Well, partition it to address the T's. This is just for those of you who suffer from the T's. Let's go with a half an hour. Let's say you do a half hour of writing every single day. Here's how you can address the T's without caving to the T's. Spend 20 minutes writing on your whip. What are, whatever that is, novella, short story, novel, whatever you're working on, audio drama script. The majority of your time dedicated to writing that whip. Then spend the last 10 minutes playing around in that new project and keep that relegated or, or consistent percentages, keep those percentages consistent until you're done with your current whip. No matter how much fun the tease is of that new project, you give it a little bit of TLC every single day, a little tender loving care every day so it knows that it's loved and that you're going to want to have a relationship with it. But not right now. You're in a committed relationship. Finish the whip, then you can jump on that. Don't fool yourself. Be responsible to this too. The tease is always going to be fun for a little while. And then it too will tank out. You're going to hit the middle of that story where everything always bogs down. And it's going to slow. And lo and behold, while that thing slows, there's another new idea in the back of your head teasing you. Come here. Come here. Play in this world. It's a lot of fun. We have cookies. Right? That's going to happen. It will always happen. I guarantee you the day I fill a bucket list item and get Stephen King on this show, I will ask him about it. And if he wanted to quit on that story for something new while he was in the middle of it. We all go through these things. Don't play like you don't you don't go through them. You do. Commit. Be disciplined. Don't come up with excuses. Again, don't tell me why you can't do something. Show me how you can. Right? That's what this is about. Structure daily right through daily dedicated writing time. Partition it if you need to. Understand the T's will always be there and it will always tank out right in the middle, just like the one you worked on. I mean, hell, the one you work are working on right now was the fun one you jumped into anyways, right? The daily writing habit is critical because it keeps you in uh, the immediacy principle is what I call it. You're constantly in that world. People who don't write every day they go on with their lives and all their responsibilities, but that it's just like a long term, uh, a long distance relationship. You start creating space between you and that story. You start losing the love for it. You start losing the flow, and then it's harder and harder to get it back. And even if you do get it back, just staring at the screen for five minutes while you get in the rhythm, 
over time, that aggregate impact can have detrimental in, uh, effects, right? You just get sick and tired of looking at that stupid story. Well, you write every day. It stays immediate in your life and you plug through it quicker and faster. You don't go back and edit. Never go back and edit until the entire thing is written. And it stays immediate. Tony asked, how do I force myself? I don't have to force myself. That didn't happen by accident. It was very deliberate. Daily writing time, every single day, no questions asked. Some of you are still resistant to that, and I'm still going to beat that drum. Here's an example about balance of life. I went off on a camping trip with my family and some friends. Three days out in the wonderful Pacific Northwest, I got a little bit of writing done each day and a lot of reading and a lot of drinking and eating done. And the last day, you have to break camp. You have to get up early, break everything down, pack everything up, get it home. And because I live in the Pacific Northwest, everything is wet. So when you get home, you got to unpack everything and let it air out. I was exhausted. We'd had a long weekend. You don't sleep in when you camp. It's, you know, too bright. It's too loud. You just don't get a whole lot of sleep. So no joke, by five o'clock in the evening, I was ticking down. I was wearing out. I started started feeling that sleep come on, like undeniably, you know, like it's 7.30, 8 o'clock. I usually go to bed at 10 and read for an hour. So I knew I'm in trouble and I haven't written today. I went into the office. I grabbed my laptop with my little thumb drive I took camping with me. I pulled open the story I'm working or the novel I'm working on. I wrote a paragraph, two or three sentence paragraph, saved it, closed the laptop, put it away. My daughter laughed at me, but I got my writing time in. Anybody who takes my challenge seriously about that dedicated writing time and you do it for 30 days at a minimum, 30 days straight, never taking a break, a day break, never have a zero word count day. Tell me you're not a convert. I honestly, truly believe you will be. And then it doesn't become forced. That's what tells me, uh, quali- qualifies that question for me, was that you'd, or was the word forced? I wasn't forced to pick up my laptop after that camping trip. I wanted to. I had to get that in, but I also had balance. It took me three minutes to do all of that. And I went back and laid on the couch and watched Nightfall and fell asleep and missed like two straight episodes. Not the point, irrelevant, but I still did it. If it's feeling forced, I I really believe it's a systemic problem, meaning that you don't have that system in place for yourself. Transcription by Renzi Lee over at Renzi Lee Freelancing. For fast turnaround times on content writing, transcription, and editing services, email Renzi at renzileefreelancing at gmail.com. But you do those things and it will help. Outlining the story so you have a guidepost where you're going. It doesn't have to be detailed, folks. This can be a note page. This can be... 20 sticky notes slapped on the computer monitor or the wall behind you. But having an idea of where you're going, if you just sit down at a blank screen without an outline every two or three days or whenever the muse strikes you, yeah, it's going to feel like work. It's going to feel forced. It's going to be problematic and you're going to wait for the new story to come along so you can go play in that world. For me, this is a really easy question to answer. So I challenge anybody who's feeling like Tony did. And Tony, I want to thank you for that question. Because I think it's an awesome question that a lot of people will be able to relate to. I honestly think that any of you feeling that, if you set up that structure, if you take my advice, accept my challenge, see what comes out. I think you'll be very pleased with the results. You've got to give it time to turn around. Behavior modification 101. It takes two times as long to unlearn something as it turn as it took to learn it. If you've got a nail biting habit and you've been doing it for your entire life, 
and you're 20, guess what? <laughs> it's going to take the rest of your adulthood into senior citizenship to unlearn, completely unlearn, to stop biting your nails whenever you're feeling blank, fill in the blank. This is no different. Give it a fair chance. Give it a fair shot. Discipline, drive, and dedication. And we'll see you on the other side with a novel in your hand, right? Excellent. So again, Tony, Cardinal Sins, go check out that audio drama. Thank you for your question. I hope this has been helpful to not only you, but to anybody who is feeling that same type of nagging issue with your writing. Help yourself. If this has been helpful, go ahead and leave a rating and review for the show, please, on your podcatcher, wherever you get it. Of course, Apple Podcasts is the place to do it. I really appreciate all of those. If you want to keep the show coming, the best way to do that is to help me pay the bills. Keep those lights on. Or go pick up Rip. Go pick up Chasing the Demon, 12 Deaths of Christmas, Novel Idea to Podcast, which, whichever. Or make sure you get on the newsletter so you know the pre-order uh, of the scales when it drops. Any of those things is incredibly helpful. And it keeps me able to focus my attention on sharing these experiences and these insights with all of you. Come join us at the Horrible Writing Writer Support Group on Facebook. And of course, make sure you subscribe to the stories we tell so you don't miss any of those monthly episodes. Until episode 108, keep being epic. This has been Horrible Writing, and hopefully after this episode, you suck less than you did at the beginning. I am Paul Sadin, your host, Extraordinaire. You can find me over on the Twitterverse at Writing Horrible and over at paulsadin.com forward slash horrible dash writing. Until next time, suck less. Suck less.